So um, I've been asked to talk about patient selection for mitral TEER. Um, and um, these are my, my disclosure. So um, uh, for TER, um, we, we have uh, uh, several devices, the MitroClip and Pascal, that allows for edge-to-edge -edge intervention and uh, correction of the leaflet coaptation without annuloplasty. Um, so, um, as you know, we treat two types of two etiology of MR, uh, the, um, the primary MR, essentially the type 2 with the mitral valve prolapse, um, and uh, the uh, secondary MR, especially the type 3B, according to the uh, Carpentier classification. And let's start with the secondary MR because maybe it's the more challenging and uh, um, and, and and actually secondary MR um, generally there is a myocardial injury with adverse LV remodeling and dilation that causes tethering of the mitral uh, valve uh, apparatus and therefore causing secondary MR. And then the secondary MR of course further worsen uh, the uh, LV uh, remodeling and dilation, and again, the tethering of the leaflet. So it's a kind of MR budgeting MR. So it's a, it's a vicious cycle here. So what are the guidelines for uh, indication of TR for secondary MR first? Well, first you need to have a chronic severe secondary MR with persistent uh, secondary MR and symptoms. Uh, patients not appropriate for valve surgery not having uh, end-stage LV or LV failure, because otherwise you should consider palliative care, and uh, will fulfill criteria suggesting an increased chance of responding to TR. And, and well, the guidelines are relatively vague on, on this last step. So if you do have all these criteria, yes, TR is indicated. If not, you may consider TR, but uh, you know, with, with caution. Uh, so I summarize here again the criteria that should be considered for patient selection for TR in secondary MR. Again, persisting severe secondary MR in symptoms, not eligible for surgery, no end-stage LV or LV failure, fulfilled criteria for likelihood to respond to TR, and finally, of course, considered anatomically suitable for TR. So let's first uh, pause on this definition of CVMR in the context of secondary uh, uh, MR. Because for primary MR, we know the criteria that are generally used, you know, an airway more than 40, regression volume more than 60, and regression fraction uh, more than 50%. But for um, secondary MR, um, some studies suggest that the impact on uh, clinical outcomes may occur at lower threshold of the airway and, and reaction volume with uh, airway more than 30 and a reaction volume more than 45. And these are actually the criteria that have been used in the co-opt and mitral FR. So um, this is the definition for severe MR or moderate to severe uh, secondary MR and uh, can be considered uh, as an indication for intervention. And in this study, actually, uh, it is clear that patients who have an airway more than 30, regression volume more than 45, uh, but corresponding probably to a regression fraction more than 50% because uh, these patients with low flow state, uh, these patients with a secondary MR often have low flow state. So a re regression volume of 45 ml actually corresponds to relatively large regression fraction. And so these patients should be considered as having at risk severe or moderate to severe MR. So we know uh, all these results, you know, this diametrically uh, opposed uh, results of the uh, two trials uh, that have uh, assessed TR in the context of secondary MR, the COAP trial that was uh, very positive and the mitral FR trial that was completely negative. Um, and a priori, this was the same trial design in the same population. But if you look into the details, there are some differences in the trial, and the main differences are that in the co-op, uh, there was uh, clearly um, more patients with true severe or moderate to severe secondary MR, whereas in mitral FR, there was a higher proportion of patients with moderate uh, MR and maybe less with severe. The other difference is that the LVs 
uh, of uh, this, uh, this in this trial appears to be more dilated in uh, mitral FR than in quad. So maybe more advanced um, heart failure and LV dysfunction in a mitral FR versus quad. And so, yes, indeed, um, I think where the TR is most likely to benefit the patient is on the patients who have a um, uh, who have a significant, so moderate to severe MR, so grade three or four, um, with not too much uh, LV uh, uh, dilation, so uh, and LV dysfunction, so LV and systolic diameter less than seventy millimeter. That was one of the uh, inclusion criteria in co-op. LVF more than twenty percent. Um, on the other end, you know the patients who have maybe less severe MR, so mild to moderate. Uh, are less likely to benefit from an intervention that target MR, makes sense. And also the patients who have moderate to severe MR or more, uh, but who have advanced uh, LV dysfunction, dilation, well, the benefit is, is uncertain. Uh, so this is what led some investigators to propose this proportionality framework in secondary MR to be able to interpret the differences between the mitral FR and the COAP. So the, the, the um, uh, this proportionate MR will be a, a, an, an MR that appears more severe than the uh, LV dilation that is disproportionate versus the LV dilation. And the proportionate MR is uh, well, the opposite where the, uh, the MR severity is in proportion with the LV dilation. I have to say that I like the concept. I, I don't like the way it has been labeled, the terminology that has been used. And, um, uh, and, 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 and indeed, using this concept and the ratio of the ROA to the LV and diastolic volume, the patients in, in co-opt will be in the severe and disproportionate MR, more likely to benefit from intervention because here the MR is probably the key factor and the key causal factor of the heart failure. This also has been called, uh, and I prefer this terminology uh, by other investigators as MR dominant, so MR is the expected main cause of the heart failure. Whereas in the uh, mitral FR patients where there is proportionate MR or MR LV co-dominant, um, then maybe um, uh, the benefit of uh, TR is more uncertain. So to kind of reconcile this, this uh, maybe this concept and and make it more clinically uh, applicable, we, we propose this reappraisal of this framework. So the first step is to make sure you have a chronic cytochrome MR that is at least moderate to severe, so grade three or more, so regression fraction more than 40 or 50%. Um, and then you, the next step is to assess this LV dilation versus MR severity proportionality. And let's start by the far hand on the right here. If you have extreme LV dilation, you know, uh, very advanced LV failure with LV and diastolic volume index more than 140 ml per meter square, then probably uh, it's, it's, it's too late and uh, you should consider other therapeutic options and palliative care. Um, on the other end, you have, to have what was called before disproportionate MR, but what I, I prefer to call proportionate LV dilation, where there is, you know, this ratio of EROA to LV and diastolic volume ratio is more than 0.14. So there is, um, I think, some evidence that the MR is causal in the heart failure uh, and the LV and diastolic volume index so is, is uh, abnormally high, but not too high. So between 82 and 140 ml per meter square, then these are the patients who are the most likely to benefit from TR. These are good candidates for TR. Um, if there is excessive LV dilation where you have the ratio, the proportionality ratio that is now less than 0.14, then these patients, well, you're not sure if the MR is um, an active contributor to the heart failure or a bystander. And so let's say that these patients are less likely to benefit from TR. They may benefit, but you know, it's a bit less predictable. And, and finally, if you have small LV dilation where the LV is not or minimally enlarged. I always, you know, think that maybe the MR is not that severe and you should rule out overestimation of MR severity and more optimize the, uh, uh, the medical treatment. Then the next step, 
once you know the patient is probably a good candidate for TR, is to make sure that it, it, the patient is anatomically suitable for TR. And you have this great table that provides the criteria um, of suitability for the uh, TR, it's for the mitroclip. Um, and um, in, in the left column, if you are, if you have this criteria that in, in the grid zone, these are patients who are suitable for TR or neocord. Um, in the orange here, um, well, uh, if you have one criteria, that's okay. But if you have several, maybe you should, you know, it's more like um, a decision to take between TR or TMVR. And finally, if you're on the red here, it's more uh, not good candidates for TR and, and it would be more TMVR. The next step and why the anatomy uh, of the mitral valve leaflets and, and, and subvalvular apparatus are important to consider is once you decided, okay, TR um, is a good option for this patient. And for example, here decide to use mit mitroclip, um, uh, uh, you can use this criteria to, to decide which type of clip you're going to use, the NT, the NTY, the HT, or the XTY. So some uh, example here of patient with a severe secondary MR that uh, you can appreciate here. And, um, and um, um, so we're going to measure the, uh, the extension of the jet. You see here that is pretty long, around um, 10 to 11 millimeter. Um, and the leaflets are not calcified. It's essentially a pathology uh, that is dominant in segment two. Um, you can appreciate again here the uh, MR. So there are several uh, criteria uh, that are met in the in the in the green light. So uh, central pathology in segment two, no leaflet calcification, mitral valve opening area that did not did not show, but obviously more than four centimeters square. The mobile length of the posterior leaflet was more than ten millimeter. The coaptation depth, which is an important uh, parameter, is less than eleven. Uh, so several uh, criteria in favor of TR. There is one that is kind of mm, in between, which is the Carpentier 3B, uh, but that's most of the case in the secondary MR in this category. So in this case, we decided to do a TR. And um, so a, a mitroclip was selected as device. And given the wide elongated jet that I showed you, uh, we're going to use a wider device. And because of the other criteria mentioned here, we're going to use a longer device. So it's going to be the XTY that is going to be selected. So showing here first clip. Um, and um, and uh, often when you have some criteria that are in the, in the, in the orange, uh, you often have to use uh, two clips. And, uh, and indeed, there was some residual MR after the first clip. So putting here a second clip. And um, now, um, much better, you will see on the left, on the right, sorry, the final results that shows, you know, um, just a, a trace to my residual MR. So for, t for primary MR now, what are the guidelines? Well, um, there are maybe less criteria and step than for uh, secondary MR. So if you have patient with, again, chronic severe primary MR, who are considered inoperable or had high surgical risk and were anatomically suitable for, for TR without extended heart failure, uh, with extended health failure after extended health failure treatment, let's say, uh, then this could be a good candidate for TR. So I summarize here again, so severe chronic primary MR symptoms, extended heart failure treatment has been accomplished, inoperable or higher surgical risk, Treatment not considered to be futile by the heart team as usual, and again considered anatomically suitable for TR. And we're going to use the same, you know, anatomic um, criteria that we uh, previously described for secondary MR. So showing here an example of a um, a mitral prolapse, as you see here, um, and some uh, significant primary MR. Here is the um, the flail width. Uh, that is uh, pretty wide, actually, uh, 2.18 uh, centimeters, so more than two centimeters. Um, and um, oh, this was the um, the uh, the measurements of the length of the uh, mobile portion of the posterior leaflet. Um, and um, the leaflets are not calcified. Again, this is more uh, um, a P2 uh, prolapse here. 
So, um, a priori, a, um, uh, if we summarize with a table, central pathology in segment two, no leaflet calcification, mitral valve opening area, okay. The mobile lengths of procedural leaflets more than 10, coaptation that less than 11. So the only criteria that is in the orange, more like uh, hesitating, is this flate well, that was more than 15 millimeter, actually more than 20 millimeters. So you know that if you go with TR, you'll probably need more clips, more than one. <laughs> um, but I think it's reasonable. And there are some criteria for using a wider uh, clip here uh, because of the flare width more than 15 millimeter. And again, um, uh, wider and longer. So again, in this case, we're going to use the XT wide. Uh, XTW. This is after first clip. Good results, but you know, I think uh, need more. So um, this is the first clip in place. Um, and after the first clip, we check for the uh, iatrogenic mitral stenosis, mean gradient of two, pretty good. Uh, so no evidence of uh, mitral stenosis. Putting a second clip now. And again, after the second clip, um, uh, no, again, no, no mitral stenosis. I mean, within the, in the two, uh, very stable and um, pretty good results um, uh, that I can reshow really here. Um, you see with really only a trace MR after the placement of this uh, two clips. So if we summarize, you know, the, um, the criteria for patient selection for TR, for MTR, for primary MR, First, you need severe chronic primary MR defined as EROA more than 40, registration volume more than 60, registration fraction more than 50%, and symptoms. It needs to be symptom, symptomatic severe MR. Patients who are considered inoperable or high surgical risk, who have, um, uh, who have had an extended heart failure treatment, so medical therapy for heart failure, although there is not much for primary MR. Treatment not considered to be futile, and finally, which is common for both primary MR and secondary MR, anatomically suitable for TR. So I've summarized the key criteria here. Central pathology in segment two, no leaflet calcification, mitral valve opening area more than 14 centimeters square, coaptation depth uh, less than 11 millimeter, mobilization, uh, mobile length of the posterior leaflet uh, more than 10, and uh, the flay width less than 15 millimeter. Uh, and for secondary MR, same persistent severe secondary MR, but here the criteria for severe MR is somewhat different. It's more moderate to severe, if you will. EROA more than 30, regression volume more than 45, and regression fraction more than 50 or 40, depending on the studies. Uh, not eligible for surgery. No evidence of end stage LV or RV failure and deletion. And fulfilled criteria for likelihood to response to TER which include the uh, disproportionate ratio of EROA to LV and diastolic volume more than 14, LV and systolic diameter less than 70 millimeter, that was a co-op criteria, LV and diastolic volume index less than 140 ml per meter square, and LV ejection fraction more than 20%. You don't need all these criteria, but I think, you know, um, the, the more you have criteria in this category, the more uh, the likelihood will be uh, of this patient to respond to TR. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Pibaro. Uh, this was an excellent uh, lecture, really, focusing on most things. Um, due to time, I think we will proceed with uh, the following uh, talk, and then uh, maybe you could stay with us for a few more minutes. We kindly request all our speakers to try and uh, keep in time so that we, we do not uh, uh, enter too much on, on to the next session. So. Dr. Patakos, would you continue presenting, please? Yeah, Dr. Makriyanis will present the next speaker. Good morning from me. Uh, we're moving to the next presentation.